It's October 16th, 2024, and uh, I'm here to talk about primary colors. Uh, okay, so everybody see primary colors. I don't care if you're in first grade or 12th grade. Uh, this is a skill just like math. You warm up like math. Uh, we're, I have gouache paint. Uh, the primary colors are red, yellow, blue. We may work in white and black uh, to enhance the design today. I don't know if we'll get that far. Uh, I start off in one tone. Um, and once again, these are gouache. You can get these at any art supply store. They're a kind of watercolor, but they're not transparent. That's one of our vocabulary words, transparent. Another one is opaque. O-P-A-Q-U-E. We'll get to that. Right now, we're just having fun creating. We get to academics and how art relates to engineering and all that stuff later. Bear with me. Hope you enjoy. So we're taking our blue gouache. And we're just drawing with a tube today. Uh, you know, it, I don't know if you can really get involved with that too much in the classroom. We're doing, you know, whatever we're doing, we're just doing. Okay, so it doesn't always work like that, but today it's going to do like that because we want to get uh, have people get involved and have a little fun. Okay, so let's say we have this midtone. We just drew a, a design with the midtone. We know how to be neat while we do it uh, to an extent, but to an extent you're going to, you know, it's art. And all we found today was a, a very, the, the brush we have is, is what it is. Uh, all my brushes are in the Bronx where I'm doing, uh, in New York, where I'm doing some paintings. Uh, and, uh, so I just had, you know, I got the idea to do this, uh, for, for one reason, uh, among others, which is that, Whatever supplies you have, art supplies or any other supplies, necessity breeds invention. Uh, everybody say necessity. That's another vocabulary word. N-E-C-E-S-S-I-T-Y, necessity, breeds invention. That means that if you need something and you don't have it, you find what's around and you use it anyway. And uh, so we have this kind of really beautiful, it's not kind of beautiful, it's really beautiful. And, you know, we're just making designs. Look at this. Just, you know, what you're doing is you're just drawing with a brush. So uh, because I'm not, I mean, you know, I'm not even used to doing it. I've been working in pen for so long on the subway. And you've seen my videos probably. If you haven't, go check them out. But uh, uh, now we're trying to emulate feathers with a brush, with gouache, with a brush that's, uh, you know, it's... Uh, the kind that you go to the 99 cent store and you, it comes with these watercolors, which we're not even working in that. I decided to go straight to gouache. I wanted to show you that you can do this stuff with the, these watercolors, which you get for like $3, $2, whatever, $1.79 with this brush, which the, I guess the good reason for that would be necessity breeds invention, meaning I don't have my best brushes. That's for doggone sure. They're up in the Bronx but I'm using what I have. So now I'm kind of, and, and not only that, but this, you're supposed, when you use watercolor, it's always best to use a special kind of paper that's more absorbent, that, that follows through with, with the design you're trying to do by being, you might say, user-friendly. But in the old way, not, you know, now you would say user-friendly, it may, makes you think of technology. But this uh, art, uh, visual art, it actually was technology. Uh, is it still technology? I don't know. What if everything ceased to be as it was because of some kind of natural catastrophe? You know, I'm not trying to be a doomsayer or anything, but it's always good to be able to do stuff by hand. And that includes uh, art, which in its original form was a way for different tribes of humanity to communicate about who gets to use the waterhole who has water rights, who has hunting rights, who has land rights, when it got to the point where we were, became an agrarian society. And uh, that's, I mean, all these words, I've coming up with so many words. I know that it depends on your age group, but even, you know, from, from uh, kindergarten through 12th grade, which is what this is geared towards, and that's a big span. That's like uh, four years old all the way up to, uh, 
12th grade could, could include somebody that's 21. It depends on your situation, but mostly it's uh, four years old to 18 years old. Uh, although art, it's for any age group. Uh, as soon as you're able to manipulate a drawing utensil or a painting utensil, maybe two, three years old, all the way up to the day before you're called away from this realm. Art is for everybody, any age. Uh, just give you a quick, that's a mid-tone. So I used the blue as a, a mid-tone. I would come back if I wanted to develop this piece on a canvas. Uh, but uh, I don't suppose we're going to do that. So we're going to just take a little extra where we have it. You see there's a lot of blue up here. And go ahead and just put that, uh, I heard people call it a John Henry. And I'm like, you know, and that's like a, a name for a signature. But John, uh, it wasn't actually John Henry that... Uh, I've heard it mistakenly called, put your signature there, put your John Henry right there. I heard that a lot down south, uh, I guess, when I was growing up in Carolina. Uh, I haven't really heard it up here. Uh, but on the Constitution, it wasn't John Henry. <laughs> it was John Hancock. So uh, up here, more accurately, I sometimes have heard, I think once or twice, maybe in the last 20 years, put your John Hancock right there, which means put your signature, because John Hancock signed the Declaration of Independence bigger than everybody else, uh, which the Decla Declaration of Independence is uh, the document that uh, Thomas Jefferson wrote to the, the King of England, King George. They called him Mad King George. You know, they had a lot of names that they called him because they didn't like him because they unfair taxes and this and that and the other and everything in between. And we just had Indigenous Peoples Day which is why we're talking a little bit about social studies, uh, which uh, the last thing I'll say is that it used to be called Columbus Day, but there's a lot of trepidation about the activities of people that came when people were already here and what happened to the people that were already here. We have the Tainos, the Inca, the Arawak, all native blood from uh, Inuit, all the way up uh, up north, all the way down to Tierra del Fuego, including what we now call Peru, what we now call well, Bolivia, uh, South America, North America, Central America, uh, and, and especially where Columbus landed infamously uh, on uh, 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 Barbados, what is now Barbados. To be continued. Thank you. Thank you so much. Everybody have a great day.